So hello and good afternoon. I welcome you to today's special webinar, how to trade the market opening of the US markets exclusively for JFD brokers. Uh, my name is Jens Slatan and I'm presenting this format to you exclusively for JFD brokers. Um, so sorry for being a little late, just, just a little, um, but I uh, promised something um, over the last webinars and I just um, um, saw that I nearly forgot to update what I promised to update here. And um, I, I just had to do this and it took me, it took me uh, uh, two minutes here and that's why we're, we're a little late. But um, now I can promise you that you'll be uh, positively surprised. So um, as, as already told over over the last week or in the webinar last week, um, I um, I'm right now um, about to translate my online educational course um, uh, uh, into English. And um, here it's not just that that you have to to uh, translate all the text um, around this topic. So it's over 130. Um, um, pages yeah, I have to translate here, but it's also that I have to translate um, all the charts I use here, respectively graphics. And uh, I can already go here to this. We'll we'll discuss this um, in a few seconds, but just that you know what I'm talking about here. That's the chart, and it has been a German chart or a German graphic here for quite a while. And I'm I just hope that with the translation now, um, the uh, um, idea behind this concept of um, looking at the distribution area, respectively uh, the accumulation area, becomes more clear, especially probably because we are right now very extended here in the Dow Jones on the upside. And in from my personal point of view, an area we should definitely call distribution area. That's that said, it means that um, anti-cyclical aggressive short engagements probably will become more and more interesting, even though our main focus um, will be on the S&P 500 here. So um, uh, first of all, I'll just I'll just give you this. That's probably the best. Um, so. This is the um, open range breakout setup and um, how I trade the open range break setup. And the last week in the special webinar, um, I think the topic was behavioral finance, if I remember that right. One second, please. I'll just have a look. But I think it was behavioral finance. No, it was the three columns of profitable trading. Yeah, makes more sense, to be honest. Um, so it's uh, another special webinar I held um, exclusively for, for JFD. And... Um, these three columns of profitable trading, they cover one column called uh, trading, respectively building, formulating, and then trading an advantage and that advantageous, oh, I'm sorry, advantageous and profitable trading strategy. And um, um, yeah, it, it's, it's obvious why this is so important to have such a strategy here. Um, I mean, it should be clear that having a clear game plan every day brings you in a very favorable situation. And not just in terms of uh, the knowledge that you know, okay, what I do here is profitable and I will make money in the long run. Um, but also it gives you mental stability and uh, it, it will give you, it will give you alone that this 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 aspect alone will give you an, a tremendous advantage uh, compared to nearly 90 percent of your competitors out there um and uh there's it's not it's not um um no coincidence that here in the broker industry there is a saying um which is 90 90 90 and uh that's 90 percent of the people lose 90 percent of their money in 90 days that's on average that's the rule of thumb in the broker industry why do i know that so uh very easy it's um um i've i've been I'm working for a broker for quite a while over five six years um and uh, you you may have heard about daily fx um and that was the research arm um, of of FXCM before it was sold for um, 40 million last autumn uh, to IG Markets and I built this research arm and educational arm here um, for the German Austrian and uh, Swiss um, uh, community respectively uh, audience and it was highly successful and uh, during uh, during my stay there during my work there i've um not just met plenty of traders and uh, um, i built lots of contacts here but it's also uh the case that that i that i've seen several uh, account statements from traders and um in fact 
and that's just the it's just the truth. Um, I've really never met a profitable retail trader uh, during this time. So all the traders who traded there, um, some of them, some were ahead, but being ahead doesn't necessarily mean they're trading a profitable strategy. But um, sometimes you, you just um, um, choose the right market, and if everything shoots up and you're long, well, everything's cool. You make money. And same goes for if you were short. Um, but there was, there's never been a, a trader I, I personally met, uh, not in person nor in, uh, in, in in written form, who really was profitable. And the main reason for that was simple: um, people didn't know really where to start plus they didn't know um, which strategy to trade respectively to, to have a strategy that this is that this is crucial if you want to be successful in trading um, and uh, that was um, also one of the, the the reasons why I finally decided to to then go out on my own and then fund my own company um, and uh, yeah, and in this case, not just in terms of trading education, but also in terms of managed accounts. So some people just say, "Hey, that's just too much," and it's uh, I don't want to learn all this. What um what 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 you have to learn if you want to be tr profitable in your trading? Um, I just want to have um um an option here to give a profitable trader who can prove that he's profitable. I want to give him the money, and he'll manage my money, and everything's fine. And that's another thing. Um, what what I offer as a money manager. And and um, so why, why do I tell you this? It's very easy because it, it's nearly um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking uh, the, the last words of the webinar from last week in terms of those three columns. And I, I promised to you back then that we'll um, formulate such a profitable trading, stra trading strategy today. And in fact, what you see here is the basic version of this strategy. A basic version, it's already profitable. What do I mean by that? What's what's meant by, by being profitable? Um, I've prepared already a chart here. One sec. Um, where is it? Here. So, um, and by the way, let's zoom in here. So, um, this is the, the strategy. These are the key parameters, okay? So, if you traded this strategy here with those parameters, um, during the last around seven years, from 2010 onwards, November 2010 onwards, and then till today, or no, not, not today, but it's two, three weeks ago, by the way. Um, that was a special webinar I held together with a PhD in, in physics here for FX Street. Probably you've, you've seen this. Um, and uh, here in this, uh, in this context, what, what you can see is these are... Uh, this is this is the equity curve you get from a backtest, and um, obviously, and this is the thing. Um, some might say now, well, uh, but I've seen several backtests with great equity curves, and everything was fine. And then I started to trade this, uh, let's say, expert advisor or whatever, and at the end, it didn't make me any money, but it cost me my account. It was, um, um, yeah. It, it just was highly unprofitable. And that has mainly to do with the fact that it was probably over-optimized strategy. So you, you, you optimize the past if you want. In this case, um, the strategy itself proved over a quite long period here. I mean, it's an intraday strategy. And you have to see that you're looking at a number of 1,347 trades here. Um, so what you, um, what, you, what you know, testing, trading this strategy in, in different market um, environments here, what you see is it's a, it's a strategy which is really simple. And, and this, is, this is the main thing. It's robust because of that. So there are not many parameters you can manipulate here. So, well, easily you could say, well, let's, let's work instead of a 10, 15 minute expo exponential moving average, for example, here, work with a 15, uh, 15 uh, um, exponential moving average. Um, this would be, in fact, very, very aggressive since you have to make sure that you understand. Let's have a look at the chart to, to give you a better um, understanding of this. Um, what do you have it? So obviously, obviously here, as you can see, um, it's not not happening anything. That's by the way, why why we have the time here um, to to discuss the strategy in detail instead of trading the market opening. Um, what you see is that the open range itself is um, around four points, and um, I have a trading filter. Um, saying I want to have an, uh, a range which is at least five points. If the uh, um, range um, between, in this case, 130, yes, 130 p.m. GMT and 215 p.m. GMT, um, if in this in this uh, um, um, uh, time frame the open range 
is not bigger or equals five points, I'm not trading. Since it's getting unattractive and unprofitable in terms of uh, the spread you have to, to take into account here. So meaning, um, if let's say the spread is 0 0.5 points um, and your range is uh, five points, that means it's 10% of the overall range. The moment it drops to, let's say, four points, at the end, you're already talking about um, 0 0.5, it's, it's more than 12%. And um, and the, the 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 least volatile the market environment is, the more difficult it is to to overcome the spread. The more likely it is to get stopped into a position which is not coinciding with a with an um, um, uh, with a with a clear break here, but it's just coincidentally as as already said. And that's one of the reasons why today, for example, there is no trading setup um, from my end. It's just a trading filter I implemented as if you put in I don't. Yeah, for example, in my educational course, I'm working with um, the retail sentiment, for example. So if, if you want to trend, uh, trade a trend following approach here, for example, um, I say, uh, let's use a moving crossover, um, 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 a crossover, a simple moving average crossover system here. And um, so I just want to trade long when the retail net sentiment, for example, is uh, net short and the other way around. And this filter allows me to reduce my trade frequency and in fact, it's not unusual that uh, the hit rate increases while the um, overall prof profitability of the approach increases too since uh, the market moves m strongly in, in, in your favor if it really moves in your favor. And um, so having such a trading filter makes definitely sense. And in this case, that makes it um, impossible for today to, to, to trade the open range breakout here in the S&P. But um, now the, the, the main thing why, why we have the chart here is now um, we want to, to include the um, EMA here, another EMA, and here you can already see it. It's the 50. It's, yeah, that's, that's coincidence, but it's 50. As you can see, obviously, um, that's, uh, that's a huge, huge difference. So um, what we, by the way, say here is if we trade above the 10 EMA, well, then we're only going long. If we're trading below the um, 10 EMA here, on a 50 minute time frame, we only go short. And as you can see here, um, the 50 EMA, for example, it takes way longer to cross back above or cross below, depends on, on which direction you, you plan to trade. Um, so here, for example. And uh, as, you can, as you can imagine, this will dramatically change the overall um, uh, um, equity curve here. But in fact, it's not happening. It's not that aggressive. So what we have here is, and that's uh, thanks to the uh, to the um, uh, Stefan here in this case. St thanks to Stefan, the, the PhD in physics. I, I, I um, had this webinar together. What we know is um, that the equity curve for an exponential moving average of 10 is uh, the most optimal one. But still, if you're working with, let's say, a 50 EMA, for example, it would be still profitable, but not as much profitable as it is right now with the EMA um, 10 here. And uh, based on the fact that we tested this over a very long period of time here, well, obviously, this is probably a very good um, and, and highly effective um, way to, to, to filter um, um, the, the market environment. And in this case, then say, OK, we use the EMA as a, as a filter. and um, that's making the whole strategy robust here. It's making the strategy robust. And um, yeah, so that's it, in fact. So what you could also do is you could uh, you could formulate a training setup based on Dow theory, I'm saying here. What do I mean by that? Well, that's exactly what I what I just tried to present to you here with this, with this chart. Um, so if you have higher highs and higher lows, you have an uptrend. And in this case here, um, if the market breaks to new highs, Building position here when the market makes new highs into the distribution area is not optimal. That has several reasons. First is, for example, the risk reward is getting more unattractive. So it's way better if you if you're long positioned here to go long in this area, right? So trade somehow in the in the retracement and then try to position yourself here in this retracement, since you can work with a way aggressive, more aggressive stop. Um, so the, the stop is way tighter while the up side potential is clearly higher making the risk reward more attractive for such a for such an approach here but this also means that usually traders who trade that way and professionals usually do that so very 
in a very rough way, but but professionals usually trade this way. Um, they usually won't trade or buy here anymore. So naturally, those traders, professionals, also have deep pockets, meaning they have lots of money, and usually that means that rather sooner than later, the, the overall demand will naturally diminish here. And that sad means if I'm trading here in this area and formulate the trading, uh, the open range here, for example, well, I, I'm looking for long engagements here and trade them more aggressively. While if the market now moves to new highs and pushes higher, 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 well, this is usually the point where you then say, okay, you know what? Um, that's an area where I plan to position myself on the short side. Very important here to note, um, we have to look at the dominating time frame in this case. So what I just presented to you here is nothing we will look at on a five or 50 minute time frame, but we look at this from an hourly perspective, probably four hour, but I think an hour gets the job done. And um, then then we, we, we analyze um, the, the market structure from this point of view and then formulate our trading idea. That said, let's have a look back at the US equity markets. That said, um, when you look here at the hourly chart, for example, in the S&P, what you can see is that obviously, it takes a little, we are somehow about to top. So we have a structure here of higher highs and high lows. So it's it's probably not the worst to, to say, well, don't go back too far into the past here, but probably it makes sense to, to, to have a look at this picture. It clearly shows you it's obviously an uptrend. So it was a range, nothing big happened here and similar, similar things are happening right here. So the market here overall has a sequence of higher highs and higher lows and now dropped to uh, to 2,400 and what is it, 455, 460 points here. That was um, last week on, yeah, Thursday. It was last week on Thursday. And now it's trading in this range from last Thursday, overall showing that the, 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 the uh, momentum on the upside seems to diminish somehow since we are trading. And this is something you can see here. And by the way, you can see way better um, in, the, in the Dow Jones right now. You can see here that that's the daily chart. That's the dominator of our dominator. We are trading in the distribution area. And that's probably one of the reasons why the market won't move any higher from here since uh, the, the, the risk reward is getting more and more unattractive. And um, there are several other reasons right now for not being too aggressively long. So, for example, I've presented this to the German audience in the morning. Um, volatility is really low. That's one thing. Volatility is really low. What does this mean? That means market is underinsured. So if there's any um, external news hitting the market, um, that will usually create probably some, some short-term panic, let's call it. Um, and... So here, now I have it, click. So I, I show to you the current sentiment, investors intelligent, and investors intelligence here. Sentiment, where is it? It's been in the morning. Here, so investors intelligent, I'm sorry, investors intelligence sentiment. And what you can see here is something we would describe as extreme optimism. That's the next thing. So markets getting aware of, okay, obviously the market moves up and they become bullish and bullish and even more bullish. And this, this is not unusual, at least in the region around short term tops, what you get to see here. Um, on top of that, we can also say from a seasonal perspective, for example, the uh, equity markets do not perform that well in August and in, 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 in September. Here, even more, it's really brutal what the what the Dow Jones delivers us here with this push towards 22,000. And um, we can clearly say that we are here in a region where it's getting more and more unattractive um, from a risk reward perspective to trade the long side. That doesn't necessarily mean that we always go for, for the short side. That does, is especially true once the market decides to generate a long signal here. So if you have a strategy um, like, like the one I already presented to you here, um, well, what does this mean? It, it means that probably when re realizing that, that we are trading in the area of distribution here, uh, we nevertheless should say, okay, the trend is your friend. And as long as we rise and make higher highs and higher lows, everything should be fine. And, and that's that. there's no reason not to be long here, even though from a risk reward perspective, uh, I'm sorry, risk money management perspective now, um, it's, it's probably more and, and better 
um, to, to just say, hey, you know what, I reduce the position size. Let's say usually I risk, just say a number, it's 1% per trade. And then when you see that the market heads to new highs um, and, and, and entering this distribution area, respectively moving to new lows and moving here into the distribution area, well, you just say, hey, you know what, I reduce the position size, cut it in, by, by, by half, by 50% and move down to, let's say, usually half what I usually trade. So let's say you're ten, trading 10 contracts and I trade five. Um, and uh, that's that's something that's something where you where, where the discretionary approach comes in. And uh, this is this is the great thing about this this strategy and what I just presented to you. So there is no such adaption taking place here. Um, and this is just a basic strategy, meaning you're trading it five days per week, uh, depending on whether, let's say here, the uh, the, the range is, is wide enough, and um, then you just go for it. And if, if you can see that the, that the strategy itself is showing you a profit, and what does this mean, by the way? So let's go in more details here, and let's have a look at those numbers there. I mean, this is always great to have those numbers, but I bet most of the people don't really know what to do with them. Um, and even though I don't have the, 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 the time here to describe to you um, uh, the, um, the, the, the concept behind expected value and everything, I nevertheless want to guide you through this. So as I as already said, during the, the online, online course I, I prepare here uh, in English, um, um, you, you get much more detail here. So you have video material, let's say for, what is it, eight hours or something? And now you have just a rough idea of how much knowledge you can uh, um, or you have to transport here uh, and, and to communicate here um, if you if you really want to profit from this and and, and want to to adapt your trading bring your trading to the next level um, nevertheless let me let me just um, um, guide you through this here so first of all let's have a look at the so-called expected value the so-called expected value is nothing more than what can you expect per euro let's say or USD or GBP or JPY, um, what can you expect per euro you risk to get um, at the end? And uh, it's calculated very easy. It's the average winner multiplied with the hit rate, and then you subtract the average loser and multiply it with the loss rate. So, and um, the target is to have an, a result which is bigger, th bigger than, than zero. What does this mean? It means you're making money. This is what profitability is. And uh, um, I, I, yeah, th in fact, that's, that's, that's what profitability is in trading. So if someone tells you, hey, I'm profitable in my trading, um, uh, you, you most of the time have to, wa have to ask him, hey, what, what do you mean by that? Being profitable means, for most of the people, it means um, I had a series of some winning streaks, uh, some winning trades now, I have a winning streak, or um, they, they say, well, I traded, I don't know, 10 times, and um, um, on average, I was ahead, or um, let's say I had six winners, I had four losers, and at the end, there was a positive result, so I'm pro profitable. Well, all this has nothing to do with profitability in your trading. But profitability comes down to expected value and what you can expect. And if the result is big as zero, well, you're making money and trading and you're profitable. Um, but it's not a, about having one profitable trade or one winner or one losing trade, you're not profitable. But this is not what's said by this. And that's also, or that is the main reason why it's so important to run such a backtest here and to have um, so much data analyzed since um, this gives you already a very good idea of is this what I plan to do here? Does this make sense? So it's similar to like formulating a business idea and saying, hey, great, it's summer. Let's sell some ice cream at the beach. Do you think it's a great idea? Sure it is. But will you make money? Um, this is the other question. This is the question what is interesting for you as a, as a, as a business owner. Um, and uh, so what you, what you have to, to see here is do my, my, my calculation, is, is, is my business idea based on a, on a good, solid um, financial fundament here? And uh, this is exactly what you have to do in your trading here um, as well. And if you don't do this, well, you probably uh, get some trouble in the long run since you will find out that what you just did here um, probably doesn't work out. So let's put this in trading perspective. Some of you might have heard of, of the strategy, let's call it, put this in quotation marks, strategy of doubling down. Um, and meaning I, I, I try to permite in, into a trade here 
which is moving against me and I, I try to, to get a better and better and better average price and at the end the market just needs to, to pull back just one small bit here and I'm, I'm uh, getting uh, out ahead with this trade. So this strategy might work in 9 out of 10 cases. Um, and it does, it definitely does. But the thing is, the 10th time, the market doesn't turn around. There's no pullback and the market just crashes you. And let's let's have a look here at a perfect example. I mean, there are plenty of reasons I could give you here um, why the euro probably should move higher. Now it's attacking 118.80. But by the way, I'm, what I'm interested in, Dow Jones is pushing higher. What does the DAX do? Okay, it's not following. It's not following. That has something to do with the fact that the DAX right here has, uh, um, or the euro, the strong euro is, is weighing heavily on the DAX, by the way. Um, but now let's come back to the euro. Just imagine the following. You, you just think, hey, we won't make it, let's say, above this significant resistance here, somewhere around 140. Let's say 115. Let's let's make it a round number here, 115. And just imagine, you just found out that the market obviously moves higher, and now you start to double down, and you start to pyramid into the market, moving higher, 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 even higher, higher, higher. And at the end, well, you'll get the margin coil. So uh, this is a market environment. It probably worked out fine here. It probably worked out fine here when doubling down. Probably it somehow worked out here. Not sure. But I can guarantee you such a market environment will crush you if you're doubling down. And this, this is the 10th out of the 10th time. It's the 10th time. And this is the market environment when you're not just losing what, what, you, what you just made, but you will lose everything else too. And this is exactly the thing here. Um, and this is something which most of the traders ignore. They say, hey, I'm, I'm doing fine nine out of 10 times. That might be right, yes. But the thing is, just being right nine of 10 times doesn't necessarily mean that you're making money the long run. But what counts is that you're making money even after 100, 1,000 trades, and that you keep on capitalizing on your advantage you might have, but you don't have, it depends. Um, so. In trading, everything comes down to expected value. So what we do now is we, we uh, shorten things up here. We call it EV. And then we multiply the average winner, which is here, the average profit, 1.08. We multiply this with 47%. This is the win rate. And then we subtract 0 0.82. Multiply this with 53. This is the loss rate obviously we can uh, have more than 100% here so what happens if we if we calculate this well we just type this in uh, calculator here and we have 0 0.576 we subtract 0 0.53 it's 43 Four, six. So, and what you can see here is that the overall result is obviously a little more than 0 0.5. We can sum this up here, round it up to, to 0 0.6. What does this mean? That means that per euro your risk on every trade, you're making an average six cents. This means, um, for example, that um, if you, let's say, have a trading account, I'm writing this down, by the way. So we make six euros per euro we risk on average. So that said, we now have a trading account of 10,000 euros. And we say, well, uh, Let's risk risk per trade. We risk 1% equals 100 euro. And as we know that we are making 6 cents on average, we know that the EV, expected value here, is 100 multiplied by 0 0.6. 0 0.06. And this is, you're making on average, six euro on average per trade profit so doesn't sound that much right 
Yes, that's true. But you're doing this every day. <laughs> that's that's the other side um, um, of this of this coin. So what I'm saying is, if you're doing, let's say, 250 trades per year, that means you're making 250 times. It doesn't ma matter if you're winning or losing it, but you're doing this. You're making this on average. You're making 250 multiplied with six. By the way, let's, let's say here it's zero. So it's 250 multiplied with six. It's 1,500 euros. So you might say, hey, this is this is not much. Oh, it is. Why is this? Well, you have to see that you're making this money here on 10,000 euro. This is 15%. This is performance of 15% per year. This is awesome. This is great. So just 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 think uh, about this. This is one strategy you're trading here. Uh, you're you're running and it obviously works and you're making 15% per year. It doesn't sound that much, but this is exactly where the long term uh, comes into play. So let's say you did this, let's say for the last five days or something. I can tell you that it doesn't work. Five days in a row, you lost money. I can I can tell you this since um, I'm running this strategy here on another account. Um, and it lost five days in a row. Uh, do I stop trading this strategy? No, since I have these numbers, I trust the strategy. I know it works, and I made money on every trade of these, even though my um, account statement doesn't show it. Now you might say this doesn't make sense. It it makes it makes perfect sense. But the thing is, you um, have to adapt your whole thinking here. Um, since we don't um, learn this in school, this concept of expected value, and that's one of the main reasons why we have so much trouble um, in trading long-term profitable uh, in, in the in the markets, and and why trading in general is such an abstract um, um, topic here. Um, probably some poker players uh, um, are here as well, listening to what I what I just present to you. Um, same thing in poker. So if you're if you're if you know. Um, or if you are a profitable poker player and if you're doing well in poker, I bet you're doing fine and doing great in trading too. It's no coincidence that many poker players, profitable poker players, um, are very good traders um, and the other way around. So um, some examples you want to hear here, look at um, Mr. David Einhorn, for example. It's a billionaire. It's uh, the founder, founder and um, hedge fund manager of uh of um uh what's the name of this of his company just forgot the name of the company it's not so cool green light green light capital yes it's green light capital here um and uh he's a he's a he's a poker player He's, um, um, some might say he's addicted to it. Yes, probably he might. But uh, the thing is that it's no coincidence that many, many poker players um, are good traders um, um, since they can think in those expected value terms. And this is making things so difficult here. And something you have to condition yourself um, um, to. If you, if you want to be successful in trading, it's not just that you have to know this, but you have to condition yourself here as well. Um, and, 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 uh, you have a lot of work to do in terms of, of the mental um, um, or from the mental side here as well when you become want to become long-term profitable in your trading. And um, yeah, so that's 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 exactly um, what I uh, just wanted to, to, to present to you here. Um, in fact, uh, in fact, yeah, that's nearly it. <laughs> so um, I just presented the strategy to you and um, everything else now, I mean, would be really great. Look at this. You trade the break of the open range and direction of the identified advantage, stop above respectively below the high and the low of the range, and then just go long or go short. That's that's nearly it on the strategy itself. Um, and uh, as already said, so you can build in a filter um, um, and then making sure that, that your strategy also adapts to low volatility market environments. In this case, meaning that um, low volatility market environments and if the range is 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 below a certain um, um, amount in terms of points here, you would just say, okay, I don't formulate such a, uh, an approach for the day, like like today. So um, what I can tell you is that this strategy is not forming hasn't formulated any any uh, um, uh, any um, 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 setup here. So we we haven't we we, we haven't any any. Uh, 
any order in the market right now since as already said since the overall range is just too tight it's just too tight here and as it seems that's also something I'd like to 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 show you here as it seems the Dow Jones is about to make new all-time highs here too so um, that the S&P is is doing not that well right now has mainly to do with the fact that the overall um, uh, um, 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 small and mid caps are not doing that well look for example at the Russell 2000 here but um, yeah all in all um, obviously the market now probably makes new new highs here all in all is trading right now in a range of, of four points not showing any big moves not, not any big action but what we know is that if we are patient and that's exactly what I'm talking about here when I'm um, when I'm presenting to you um, on those setups, also in the DAX long or short today in the in the morning here, um, what we know is that patience is key, and uh, there will be days when when you have a setup and then you just go for the setup since you know it's profitable, it works. And uh, this is this is by the way something also here which was which was implemented here in this in this uh, um, um, back test. So um, you you will find out that usually um, if you if you um, uh, dividing 1,347 here by let's say 250 trading days, um, you'll come out somewhere around five, five and a half years probably. Um, and if you look at this here, I mean, we ran the back test from November 2010 till um, uh, July 2017. Obviously, this is way more than uh, five and a half year. Um, meaning there have been days when there hasn't been any trading, um, and uh, that's that's exactly um, what I'm what I'm referring to or what I what I talk about when I say hey you have to be patient. Sometimes just the market is not the the right it, it's, it doesn't show the right conditions here to to profitable trade in, but it's not what you're getting paid for. It's not that uh, the amount of trades you do counts, but what counts here is um, that you uh, keep on working a profitable strategy and uh, that you make money over the long run in this case. That's that's what trading is about. Trading is not an action game, but trading is a game where you're getting paid for being patient, for capitalizing on your on your advantage. And um, yeah, so uh, in fact, that's it. That's it here from, from my end. If you want to contact me, then please write me an email here at jotklad uh, at jk minus trading.com i'd really appreciate and look forward to to hear from you um and uh yeah so um uh, um um that's it from my end i hope you enjoyed the morning and uh, morning meeting i'm sorry morning meeting is something we'll have tomorrow at 9 30 a.m gmt not here via go to meeting or go to webinar but we'll uh, have this and the youtube channel here from jfd brokers so um i can give you by the way the link here to uh, to this this format in uh, one second. I'll, that's a little difficult here right now since there are so many windows open right now that I just don't see where I am anymore. So hey, one sec. Um, so I'll give you the link in the chat box, and you don't have to register there. So uh, the, the the event is already announced, and um, that means so tomorrow 9:30 a.m. GMT. Just tune in and. Uh, then we'll have a look at the markets. Probably things are getting way more interesting than today, especially in the DAX, by the way. So European market open could be really interesting since we have um, the region around, so here is the link in the chat box. Um, the region around 12,100 points is really interesting. It's really, really interesting. Could get really uh, um, um, interesting when we break below this level. And um, yeah, so that's it for my end. Happy trading. Watch your stops and talk to you again then tomorrow. I uh, definitely look forward to it. And uh, um, yeah, so if we don't talk to each other tomorrow, then have a nice weekend. Enjoy yourself. And uh, probably we uh, talk to each other then next week. And um, yeah, have a nice evening. Um, happy trading. Watch your stops. Talk to you soon. See you. And bye-bye.